The world of wine can be an intimidating place. There are hundreds of different wine regions all specializing in different grapes, different varietals, they make different wine, and to top it all off, an endless amount of knickknacks, gizmos, and gadgets, all designed to make the wine drinking experience that much better. If you're a wine noob like your boy, don't stress. We're gonna go over all of these wine tools to decipher what they are, what they do, and if you, as the budding wine aficionado, should spend your hard-earned while purchasing said items. To do so, I've called on a wine professor, literally. This dude is a wine expert or sommelier who's traveled all over the world exploring different grapes and varietals, learning all about wine, then sharing it on his awesome YouTube channel. Give it up for Vince Anter from V is for Vino. Vince, come on in. Bring it in. Welcome, Bring it in for the real welcome. thing. Welcome. Cheers with our closed bottles of wine. Cheers. Wine o'clock, man. Oh, yeah. 10.30 a.m. <laughs> 10.34. All right, man, so we got 12 total items, knickknacks, gizmos, whatever you want to call them, in the house. We're going to go over all of them and decide if they're dumb, if they're worth it, or if they're a luxury item. Yeah, man, there's a lot of different wine tools out there, and some of them are definitely not worth your time, but some of them you, you have to have, so. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Where, where do we start? Where do we all right, start? so hand me, hand me that guy over there. All right. all right, so I had to get you the precious liquid to this house, right? <laughs> so this is this is my newest travel hack. I just discovered this. So when you buy a bottle of wine when you're abroad, what do you do to get it home, typically? What do you do? Uh, you mail it. Like, you mail it like or you, you throw it, it in your suitcase, yeah, like you wrap it in clothes, right? right exactly. And you hope that it's not gonna break and get all over your clothes. You have, to, you have to roll it in like a colored hoodie that matches the wine. Exactly, <laughs> no more. I found this a couple weeks ago. It's called a wine diaper. And what it is, is it has a lining in there and it also has a cushioning. So you keep the bottle of wine, you travel with it in here. If it breaks, it absorbs a whole bottle of wine. So you don't have to worry about this. You bring this on your trip, you bring a bunch of these. They're getting free advertising today. Uh, you put these in here. And you're good. And it's now if it breaks, a wine diaper? it's literally a wine diaper. So if it breaks, it won't get on all your stuff. Could it also maybe be like a human diaper? It could be in a, in a pinch. I thought you were gonna say it could <laughs> work for whiskey, and I was gonna say yes. <laughs> but sure. I mean, dude, like think about it, like road trips, dude. Like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's absorbent material. You use it however you want. Dude, I want to test it. <laughs> we can test one. Can we? Yeah. Sick. Yeah, so there's your diaper. Yep. And there's the plastic bag that it's in. This is a genius idea. Great idea. And they're cheap. The you get like six of them for like, I don't know, 20 also, bucks or something. Also, that logo is fire. <laughs> Whoever did their branding is on point. All right, wine diaper. Is this thing dumb, worth it, or luxury for the average wine consumer? So I say worth it, but there's only one way to find out. Yeah. And that's to test it. <laughs> <laughs> We're definitely gonna do that at the end. All right, let's do it. Stick around for a wine bag. Stick around. <laughs> the climax of the video. <laughs> Okay, second item, the classic wine bucket. Super necessary because the number one thing I tell people when you're drinking wine at home and you're like, why doesn't this taste as good as when I had it at the winery at the restaurant? It's because you're probably not serving the wine at the right temperature. So even red wines should be slightly below room temperature. Because when we say room temperature, what they're referring to is old European room temperature. It's colder there, they're drafty, right? Yeah. Our American 70 degrees room temperature is too hot for red wine. So even red wine should get a little bit of time in an ice bucket or in a fridge, white wine even more so. So I would say the ice bucket, super necessary. Okay. So is there any difference between like an ice bucket and like, I don't know, like a Bain Marie with some ice in it? Like, do you need like a bucket? No, no, whatever, like whatever you got. And you can use your regular fridge if you want. Yeah. Because what you can do with your regular fridge, I always tell people, white wine out of the fridge for 30 minutes, mm -hmm. red wine into the fridge. So store, minutes? yeah, so, so 30, store, 30. if you're storing the white wine in the fridge, mm -hmm. take it out of the fridge for 30 minutes before you serve because oh, fridge temperature is too cold. Got you. And if you want the red wine to be perfect, put it into the fridge for 30 minutes right before you serve from room temperature. I love Does that. Does that make sense? Yeah, 30, 30. The 30 minute rule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There is an alternative, it's a luxury, but there is an alternative. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> clear the way, clear the way. <laughs> This is your luxury product for wine temperature. This is your luxury wine fridge what? that not everybody can afford, but if you can, it's totally worth it. It'll keep your wine at the exact proper temperature. And this one, for instance, has a dual zone, whites up top, reds on the bottom. Look at this. He brought the fridge. That's how you know he's a real one. <laughs> Let's see. Brought the fridge from the crib. Man, this is cool. So, okay. So just to reiterate here. Let's get this. <laughs> Dumb, worth it, or luxury? 
the I'd bucket. say bucket worth it or just take some time and do the right thing in okay. your regular fridge. But also this is kind of like a pretty aesthetic. Like yeah, you put it on the table, nice to serve. makes the meal feel a little more special. Keeps the wine a little chill. Yeah, you're, out, you're out on the porch on like a summer night or something, you got like a nice bucket of ice. Like that's pretty like yep. up, you know what no, I mean? No, no, I, no, <laughs> I agree. So I'd say this is in the worth it category. Totally. The wine fridge, that's a luxury. Okay, you don't need fridge. it, but it, it, it'll elevate your game. You don't need it, but I want it. Yep. <laughs> Next on the docket, uh, the Coravin. What is your guess that what this does? Um, well, when you flip it upside down, it kind of looks like an anal probe. That, that's exactly, that's what I brought. That's, <laughs> you're spot on. A very violent, ooh, zoom in on that. That's yeah. not what you want. In there, the there's a needle. Or, or it might be, which is fine. That's up to you. I'm not, I'm not here to kink shame. <laughs> <laughs> what, is, what exactly is this thing? Yeah, so what this does is this allows you to open a bottle without opening the bottle which is pretty amazing. So if you just want a glass, for instance, of yeah. wine. Out of you like wanna... a nice bottle, like out of like, you know, you go on vacation, you're like, you don't want to maybe open it because it's not that special vacation, but you're like dying to taste it. Yeah, or maybe you want to see, check and see how wine's developing. Yeah. Um, this allows you to do that. Or if it's just you, solo night, and you're not trying to kill a whole bottle on a weeknight, right? So you stick the needle in, it goes through the cork. Then what you do, there's an argon gas tablet in here, and it allows Whoa. you to pour wine through the needle and it replaces the air that is lost with argon gas so that you don't expose the wine to oxygen, which is what basically, you know, kills wine. It starts to develop then, and then you have to drink it within a certain amount of time. So then when you're done, you have enough wine, you pull it up. Oh my God, the smoke. Yeah, you can see, so that's argon gas. You take off the cap, that's now argon gas, so it's creating like a seal. The cork, because it's a natural product, will seal itself again, and you're so left the with the wine. the cork is self-sealing. Yeah, so this will last for a couple weeks to, they claim longer, but I would say a couple weeks to month, month or two, okay. uh, just like this. Got you. And now you have your glass of wine. Interesting. Okay, so this isn't something that you could do long term. If you have a bottle that you're planning on saving for 10 years. They would claim it does, but yeah. I wouldn't trust it for gotcha. long term. If it was a super important bottle, I wouldn't do it. I would do it maybe a couple months. Okay. And you said argon gas, right? Is that like an alien sort of like yeah. element? If like you what? open that. Yeah, yeah. Here, I can show yeah. you the capsule. Yeah. What does this look like? Is it... It's just a little capsule in here. Whoa. You replace it. It goes right in there and it creates a seal. So it basically, you know, yeah. gets rid of that oxygen. So that it's literally like a little like airsoft. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean? like, a little like cartridge. Yeah. I like this. It's not totally practical to use all the time because these capsules are kind of like, uh, you know, the espresso capsules right. for like, you know, you got to pay every time yeah. you want to use it. Is it expensive? It. You know, it's a buck of glass yeah, sure, maybe. Sure, sure, sure. Um, but that's, that's it's still cool. It, it's very cool. It's very cool. All right, the core of in. The question on everyone's mind, is it dumb, <laughs> worth it, or luxury? I'd put it in a luxury. Yeah, I'd probably call it a luxury. It's <laughs> nice. I use it sometimes. Yeah, I use it yeah. for like tastings oh, and so things. You do. Okay. Yeah, maybe I don't want to, maybe I'm posting a tasting mm -hmm. online. I don't, I want to taste it or I'm tasting three or four wines. I don't want to open them all tonight. Sure. Uh, I'll use it for that. So it's a luxury Smart. product, but it, it works. I can attest that at least for, you know, short to moderate periods of time, it works. Totally. Next up, we know it, we love it. The standard corkscrew, as you call it. The waiter's corkscrew, the, the standard corkscrew, corkscrew, the thing that TSA takes every time you forget to take it out of your bag. Uh, yeah, you don't need a fancy opener to open a bottle of wine. This will cover you almost every time. Uh, you don't need a Vias for Vino one, but if you have one. But I mean, come on, <laughs> that's slick, dude. Let's go. And they can have whatever. I mean, this yeah. is a plastic one. This one has rosewood. It rosewood doesn't matter. Rosewood with a, with a nice, this is for defend, defending your this wine is, bottle. Yeah, this is also, yeah. uh, if you get in a knife fight on the yeah, street, yeah, you yeah. can pull it out there. Or like someone gets a little too close to your bottle when you're enjoying it. Exactly. Like uh, mm -hmm. So this is, this is really pretty easy to use. What you do, you take it, take the blade. You want to cut right below the lip. Not here, but right below the lip. Give it a nice turn. If you really want to be fancy, you turn your hand, not the bottle as much. That's how the Psalms do it, but I'm not going to judge you if you turn the bottle like I'm doing now. Pull off Perfect. your top. If you have a nice sharp blade, you get a nice clean cut. But there is a reason you cut here and not here, because if you cut here, you might actually get some, like, foil. some foil touching the wine when you pour. It's not a big deal now, but they used to make the foils out of like lead. Ooh. So there, you didn't want that. Um, now it's more tradition, but that was the reason. Dang, yeah. interesting. You don't want any, any of that so flavor. Much yeah. You put the worm. The it's worm. It's the it's worm. The worm? <laughs> okay, sweet. I didn't know that. Put it all the way in, and you want to get all the way to the bottom of the cork. If you do it here, if it's a real cork, it might break. So you want to go all the way to the bottom of the cork. So pop the worm all the way in the cork. Yeah, exactly. Uh, this is a two-step. So instead of just going right to this first step on the bottom, you use this. 
you get about halfway, pull it out, then you do the second step. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then on the last kind of pull, you just slowly pop it out. That's a nice sound. That's a great sound. Oh my God, I have, I have flashbacks. My, my first serving job, the first bottle of wine I ever like sold was one of the most expensive bottles like on the menu. I think. Oh, it was that's like, terrible! It was, like, and nobody helped you. Yeah. And I'm like a rookie ass server. Like how I'm going, it's two guys eating, like having like a business like dinner or something. And they were like, and luckily in like a nice conversation, like really into like whatever they were talking about. I'm at the table. I present the wine. I do everything I was trained. I do the thing. I'm stoked on myself for being able to get it without moving. I read like the, the year and everything, and then I put the worm in. Probably not deep enough, like you just taught us. And you broke completely the cork. corked it. Yeah, yeah. And but I was like blocking it with my hand, and they were like so into what they were doing, they didn't care. So I'm like, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> and like backed up. Just I went into the bread room. Away. I went into the bread room where like you, we have like the wine and the bread and stuff. I was tweaking out, like trying to get this thing fixed. I finally got it open. There was nothing. Luckily, I'm not sure how. No cork in the wine or anything. Go back to the table, gentlemen. <laughs> I like pour him his taster. I've had, I, I've had, this is a nice sharp blade and yeah. uh, I've slipped and cut myself and just had to like power through while I'm bleeding, like trying to keep uh, my hand on the side. That's brutal. <laughs> All right, so what do we think here? Dumb, worth it, or luxury? I think not only worth it, but essential. And what do we think of the other sort of like twisty, uh, I don't know what to call them, like they kind of have wings and they go like, Oh, dumb. Dumb. Oh, yeah, okay. dumb, dumb. unnecessary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Which is funny because I feel like that was like the prevailing, like popular. Like you'd go to a friend's house, open the drawer to try to get like a wooden spoon or something, and like you would see that one. Yeah, the one that does like, the why? wings, the like, bird. These yeah. only kind of no come into like the style, obviously within the salmon and wine community. Listen, it works. Whatever. It's just you don't need that. That yeah. does the same job, and it's smaller and it's right. more efficient. Okay, next up on the docket, another wine opening tool. This is called the Asso. You said Asso. Like A H. Hyphen S O. Okay, cool. Is that like an acronym or? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know why it's called that. I should look that up. I don't have an answer for you. There's a lot of wine opening tools. If, if they work for you, great. Mm -hmm. But this one is specific for old bottles. So what you have here is the two prongs. <laughs> why do these all look like alien weapons? <laughs> like, like, hold on a second here. Look at this. <laughs> then you have like, this reminds me of like, I don't know, like Predator would be rocking this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and Look I feel like that. I could like, you know, put these on my knuckles. That's straight up from Dune. <laughs> All right, anyways, go ahead. Sorry. All right, so <laughs> I digress. let's pretend you had an old bottle. Right. The cork is probably going to be fragile. Here, give me that uh, corkscrew real quick. If the cork is fragile, you don't want to use this type of corkscrew because what you might do is break the cork. It's not really, these things just aren't really age, delicate. Just the cork is going to break down. Yeah, yeah, nothing right. wrong with the wine, just the cork gets older and crumbly and it, cork's a natural product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what you want to do is take the foil off just like you would a normal bottle. But if there's an older bottle, instead of using this, what you would do is you take this, you put it in the sides on each side and you kind of slowly just wiggle it down in there, and you're getting on the sides of the cork. That's so interesting. Rather than cutting through it and basically sacrificing the integrity. Mm -hmm. There's also a thing called a Durand, which is this plus a worm in the middle, and you can use that too. Um, and then you wow. lift it out like this. And so what you're doing is hugging the cork, whoa, and you're pulling it out whoa, like that. Whoa, look at that. <laughs> Why is one side bigger than the other side? Is it just to get like a grip? I think because you, you don't want to try and start it at the yeah, same time, sure. you know? And it's also, looks like a bottle opener maybe. You might open your 1989 Bordeaux and then you can turn right around and open your Miller Lite. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. You know the drill. Dumb, worth it, luxury. Luxury. If you're opening old bottles, need it. But otherwise, luxury. Luxury. Got yeah. it. You have been so excited about this. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> Next up on the docket, uh, what is this thing called? Taste of Van. Okay, t Taste of Van? Taste of Van. Taste of Van. Taste V I N. Ta oh, okay. Taste like, of Van. Okay, it's okay, a French okay, thing, okay. though. Okay, word, word. And so, like, does the psalm come out like this? Just like. That's, this? that's literally exactly how the psalm would come Beautiful out. He'd come out play. wearing this. Just like a huge clock or whatever? Yes. Okay, well, what, Do you have what, any idea? Can what I, it I'm does. gonna take a guess. I'm yeah, gonna take, take a guess. Okay, okay, okay. Let me just. <laughs> I'm thinking like, I'm thinking like you come out, because like think about it, like when they bring you a, like, a, like a bottle to the table, like sometimes they might be holding it like this, but what if you see someone with like a chain? Because chains make everything more luxury. <laughs> I, don't know. I love I don't that know. this was your guess. This makes me so happy, <laughs> I can't even tell you. All right, what is it? What is no, it? No, so what this is, what this is, is oh, this. Oh, so you wear it. Look at the you thing. do wear it. Oh, wow. Yeah, you wear it like this. So what you would do is you would take, go down to the cellar, it's dimly lit, you'd have a candle, uh, and the, because of the ridges in here, and because it's bright silver, it helps the candlelight better reflect off it. 
and then you would pour a little bit of the wine in there and you can see the color really, really well uh, in Whoa. this. You can smell it and then you can taste it. That's, oh, and it's nice and open so you can like smell it. And then like every sommelier has like a little Igor helper that follows them around in the dark cellar. And yeah, yeah, just and, like, give me my <laughs> And then you send them back to the yeah. <laughs> back to where they belong. Yeah. So, so it was it was literally a wine tasting and testing device that they used to use, um, and now it's more like tradition. So at like a really nice restaurant, yeah. maybe you would see a sommelier wear this. Like to maybe. the like like is it something they're just rocking all night? Yeah. Like you would if you're a som, you might yeah. rock this all night. Like you might rinse it off, wipe it out, and just like just like let it hang. Yep, yeah, and let it go. Wow. Here, let me rinse you, man. Let me Thanks. Rinse you. No, give me. That's interesting. So it's like a fashion piece as well. So I'm con I'm confused why like maybe like maybe it's it also like a status symbol yeah, exactly. kind of thing. Like it, you know. or like I don't know. Maybe you're going like meh. Maybe you're going like 2004 hot topic. Yeah. And just you just when the and the chain and you connected to your wallet. Yeah, bro. Like it's like a Dickies <laughs> wallet. <laughs> you know what I mean? oh. Could this be helpful for like you when you're like looking in, in wine and like like would you use this in a tasting? I know you can see it through the glass, but. Is this like, does this make it better for you? No, you no. you would just use a glass at this point. Like gotcha. this is, I, I hate to, I know you want to wear this so bad. Yeah. <laughs> you want this in your I life, really do. but you won't see this anywhere. Okay. This falls in the category of uh, like old traditions, but. Old tradition, okay. And speaking of category, dumb, worth it, or luxury, where does this fall? For any average consumer, dumb. Dumb, okay. I hate to <laughs> for say, you, I hate to say for you, dumb. totally worth it. Can because it like brings a, you so much joy. 100%, can we also put like, like maybe like dumb, worth it, luxury, Fly? Because like <laughs> this is fly, dude. Next on the docket, we have circular mirrors. <laughs> these. What are these called? Yeah, you get 50 of these for like seven bucks if you want them. Okay. You can, you know, you can pass them out to friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we're in the pouring device category. Okay. Uh, any guesses as to how you how you use this? I, I, yeah. Yeah, you're, you're, okay. yeah, you're spot on. Okay, okay. Yeah. So you might see these, if you've gone to a tasting room, sometimes they'll give you branded ones of these. Oh, okay. um, and all you do is essentially roll these up, throw it on in there, and then it just helps you get a nice, oh, nice. clean pour and a clean break. Like oh, look how wow. easy that was. You don't even have to twist the bottle. Yeah, just no boom. no twist. Whereas like yeah. if you do it like this, yeah. look. It's like, okay, it's not going out clean and look at all, like yep. it drips. So yep. you kind of got a twist, it's the a little works harder. On a white tablecloth too. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Or it goes, yeah. let's say you want to look good. You want to save the label sure. and you don't want that drip messing up the label. Mm -hmm. So kind of a cool little device Is and it's it super cheap. And what are these called? I don't know what you'd call them. Just foil. Like wine disky foil. Wine di <laughs> disky, yeah. disky foil thing. Really they have a name, I don't know what they're Amazon called. Amazon wine disky foil thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but for real, we will do our best to put like links for whatever you can get online below to help you out if you want to get any of this stuff. Yeah. yeah all, that. all right, disky foil thing. Dumb. <laughs> worth it. <laughs> I don't know what just happened there. Dumb, worth it, or luxury? I mean, Luxury, the only reason I'd say worth it yeah. is because they're super cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, what, But what is, you don't, you can obviously just pour the wine like this. So that's why it's luxury in my opinion. Next up, the decanter? Nope, uh, aerator. Aerator. The aerator. Aerator. Aerator, okay. How does this thing work? Yeah, pretty simple. Uh, throw it in your wine. Oh yeah. So you'll see it's adding air as it pours. Which is kind of like the same reason that you would want to swirl it's the, the wine. It's the same reason you'd want to swirl the wine. Uh, adding air to wine, you know, it's been cooped up in a bottle. It, wine's a living product. It changes over time. Uh, and over time, what you're doing when you store bottles is slowly adding air. Air is going in and out of the cork and helping it develop. Well, now we want to speed up that process once we open it. And so adding air helps the wine kind of breathe and open up and get more fragrant. It's like a tree, it needs oxygen. Yeah. For a human. Trees use the other one. If you go to a tasting <laughs> if you go to a tasting room, you'll see them using these a lot. Yeah. I personally think this is like a cool sort of like low barrier to entry like thing to just like have. Matter of fact, my good buddy got me this and I wanted to show it to you. Dude. Come on, dude. come on. The cat aerator. aerator. <laughs> the only thing is, is that like yours has this like reservoir. So here that that's spires. the thing. So that's more just this like a really, pourer. This doesn't really do anything. That's more <laughs> for okay. aesthetics. Okay, okay. Uh, this has like, this does have the air um, like funnel yeah, yeah, system yeah, you can going see on. There's the, unless there's like a nice belly right there. I don't, I don't think there is, but you know. The question is. The question. 
<laughs> the question is, dumb, worth it, or Lux? I think I'm putting in the dumb category. Really? Yes. That's a hot take. Only because... Is it because of the cat man? It's, it's because I hate cats. No, I have a cat, I love I cats. No, I think it's dumb because I think you get the exact same process from doing this. The reason it's worth it for tasting rooms is because they're pouring quickly and yeah. you're kind of going through a lot of wines quickly. You don't really have as much time and to let what it if sit the person and open in the glass. But to me, part of a wine is seeing how it develops from the second you pour it until the second you're kind of, you know, the couple minutes later True. as it swirls, a half hour later. And I do think there's better ways to do this job, including swirling, but also our next product, which is? The decanter. The decanter. Oh, I got one. This one you know. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> no, I got one right up there. Look, it's got little cute little twigs in it. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. I'm glad it's, I'm glad it's getting used. used. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, so how do we work this thing? Yeah, so you just grab it. If you were, let's pretend this was an older wine, you just pour slowly. And what you're gonna do, if it's a younger wine, you could just go, right? Just go fast. But if you're an older wine, what you'll do is look into the neck of the bottle. You'll wait until the sediment starts to get caught right at the top of the bottle. And you'll stop, so you won't pour all the wine. Cool. And what you'll be left with is kind of the sediment stuff on the bottom and the wine over here. And then as you can see, you've got only wine in here and it's got a whole bunch of surface area coming in contact with oxygen. Almost any wine can benefit from decanting because of the air, even okay. white wines. Okay. People don't think white wines Do you can... always decant when you drink wines? Do I you... don't always decant. But you try to? If it's a, a bottle that I spent more than 20, 30 bucks on, yeah. I'm probably gonna decant Got it. You. Because it's just gonna change, it's gonna help it. And yeah. part of the fun of wine is seeing how wine develops as it opens up. The first sip versus the sip in a half hour versus the sip in two hours, it changes and you can get a better sense of that if you decant it. I'm more so impressed that a bottle of wine will last you more than two hours. Yeah, exactly. I have a problem. The decanter, is it dumb, is it worth it, or is it luxury? I would say worth it. Okay. I would put this in the, you should, if you're getting into wine, you should own a decanter. Okay. And they're, cause they're not expensive. Right. You can find ones for $20 or less. I you don't care if you use a flower pot. It just needs to have surface area. <laughs> but I think, like I said, they're not very expensive and they're totally gonna change your wine experience. Could you, de could you decant wine in just like a, you can decant you know, in, like if you have a pitcher. You, you like if you have same a example. Could, yeah. Does this work? Mm -hmm. A pitcher works, like a margarita okay. pitcher. Anything that has some surface area yeah. and you can pour back out of. These just look nice. Yep. Like, yeah, these just look nice. I want to serve out of this. Just, I just want to. Yeah, and if you were to serve out of this, you just pour right from right from it. That's nice. Look at that stream. Better already, right? Oh, delicious. Delicious. Glass time, baby. All right, so I guess like different wine likes different glasses, right? Yeah, you got any guesses? It's well said. Red. No. Yes and no. You're not 100% wrong. Red. That is red. Ha! <laughs> White. White. Let's go. All right, two out of three, two out of I'll three. I'll take, what is that, 66%? So there <laughs> are, it's a, it's a D. <laughs> It's better than my Spanish grade. All right, so there's a bunch of different glasses out there and you can get even more in depth than this. There's some companies that make glasses for every single type of wine and there's really nice ones. You don't need to get super, super nice glasses, mm -hmm. but if you are trying to get the best experience, I think three covers you. And then in a minute, I'll tell you if you're only gonna get one, which one you should get. Okay. So three covers you and the three are, to me, a white wine glass, Actually, go this. A white wine glass, a burgundy glass, and a Bordeaux glass. White wine, burgundy, Bordeaux, these two are named after places in France that kind of define styles of wine. White wine, this is easy. This is for everything that is white other than Chardonnay. That's how you can remember it. Okay. So I would put sparkling wine in here. Yes, you're gonna lose a bit of the bubbles, but as sommeliers, we actually like sparkling wines in a little bit rounder glass so you can smell. If you have the champagne flute, mm -hmm. you get no nose out of it. Mm. And most of our taste comes from our smell. I've seen people serve champagne in like coops too. That's dumb. That's too far that's the other direction. Dumb. So okay. <laughs> That's too far the other direction. Right. Flutes, you preserve the bubbles, but you yeah. get no nose. Coops, you lose Everything. Sure, everything, because you get no bubble preservation because of how wide it is. And you also get no nose because you filled it up to the top. Yeah. So there's nowhere for the aromas to capture. So coop definitely falls in the dumb no glass. No coops, no coops. That's Nonetheless. like a great Gatsby thing. You okay. don't need to do okay. that. Okay. Uh, but I'd put any sparkling wines in here. I would also put any white wines, like especially lighter styles, Sauvignon Blanc, Gruner, Italian whites, Riesling. I'd put all of that in here. Sauterne? I'd put Sauterne. I'd use this for Ooh. dessert wines. So that's kind of like your catch-all for any white wine that isn't Chardonnay. Burgundy glass is pretty simple. Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. 
And then the Bordeaux glass is for anything red that isn't Pinot Noir. Syrah, Cabernet, Merlot. Rioja. Rioja. <laughs> anything else that isn't Pinot Noir that is red is going in here. And there's reasons for all of this. With the white wine, we want some aroma capture, but again, like we don't need as much as we might need with Pinot Noir and Chardonnay. You said aroma capture? Aroma capture. So what you're doing is you're capturing some of these aromas in the glass. Ah. So you don't fill this glass to the top, right? You fill it to maybe about here. Let's pretend this was a Chardonnay. You know, we'd maybe fill to about here. It gives us plenty of space to swirl, lots of aeration, right? Mm -hmm. And then all the aromas are getting captured in here. Uh, it makes a big difference. So that's why I think glasses are super, super important. Pinot Noir and Chardonnay are a bit more delicate. You want to capture those aromas. Whereas when you get to big, heavy reds, let's pretend this is yeah. a Cabernet. Well, they tend to be higher in alcohol and you want your nose a little bit farther away because the alcohol will burn your nose. This would punch and you in the face. If you'd be too close to the alcohol, gotcha. too close to the smell, you're gonna burn your nose, burn your palate a little bit. So you're here, now look how far I am away from, and I get the fruit character and the aroma without getting all the heat that gotcha. you would get from the alcohol. Gotcha. So that's the logic behind it. I guess if you had to choose one, which would you choose? Honestly, I think all three are worth it. Yeah. If you had to get rid of one, I'd first get rid of this and I'd pour my white wines in this. Or maybe if there's one like between these sizes, yeah. that's what I would do. I would get one all-purpose glass. And there are all-purpose glasses out there that are, that are great. Yeah. All right, so we got our three glasses here. Is it dumb, is it worth it, or is it luxury? I think worth it, especially if you're getting into wine. Worth it to have all three. Worth it to have all three. Yeah. And definitely worth it to have at least one good all-purpose glass. Totally. It does change the experience, so I think proper glasses are important. Got you. Okay. Another plunger-like object. The wine saver. Yep, the wine saver. You probably know how this works, yeah? You know, I used to love taking this thing and like sucking yeah, it. Yeah, you can suck when it. When I was a little kid, I'd be like, <laughs> is that gnarly? Sorry, if that's supposed to. Like, no, it's I fine. just washed my face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty simple. You put these guys on instead of your cork, and then you pull until you hear oh. a click. And what you've done is you've essentially sucked the air out of this part of it. And you can hear if I open it again, you hear that little. You've, you've created a little bit of a vacuum. So you pu you pump it. You when you, you we pull out the air. Pull out. Yeah, you're not putting air in, you're right. pulling you're air out. Uh, same concept as the Coravon. What you're doing is essentially trying to get rid of this air because mm -hmm. again, like air is a weird thing. Like we want air to help develop the wine, but if we're trying to save wine, we don't want it. We don't want it. So that's what it does. That's how it works. Cool. All right. So like, what do we think? Is this is this dumb worth it or is this luxury? What do you think? I think, I'm gonna say this, I think it's somewhere between worth it and luxury, right? I think it's dumb. You think it's dumb? I think it's dumb. I think it's dumb. <laughs> I think, <laughs> let me rephrase. Yeah. I think it's between dumb and worth it. Okay. Some people swear that it works. It's dumb plus. It's worth it minus. Okay, either yes. one, yeah. Diet worth it. Um, because, let's, let, first of all, let's all just like man up and finish the bottle, number one. I agree. Uh, I agree. But number hey, two. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> number two, you can get a similar effect by um, limiting oxygen oxygenization. Oxidization. <laughs> you can oxidation, get a similar effect oxidation. to slow the oxidation process by putting a cork in and putting it into the refrigerator. Mm -hmm. The chilled temperature will actually slow down that process a lot without having to do this. Also, there's some argument that this kind of takes out some of the aroma. Um, uh, you're, you're, you're kind of pulling you're some of the good with the, the bad. Yeah. Okay, so I thought that maybe like doing this plus putting it in the fridge would make it like that much better, but you're saying that just the fridge, you're good with the cork? I think so, I just don't think you need this. Yeah, okay, fair. Last but not least, the books. The our, books. From our professor himself. Yeah. Uh, Nerd! <laughs> <laughs> what the f did you call me? You know, every psalm, if you're getting started into wine, this is the building blocks of what you're gonna learn. Are these your four, like, recommendations? I would say so. There's a lot of books out yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. These are pretty good ones to yeah, start. Yeah. If you were gonna be like, Vince, what should I get right away? I would start with two books. I would start with these two. The Wine Folly book, which is by a good friend of mine, Madeline. Cool. Um, she has a great website, too. Wow. It breaks down every grape with, like, infographics, flavors, where they're tannin, their alcohol, their acidity, all that is. Um, and they, she also has like great maps, like basic maps of every single region and the styles. Um, it even starts with like some vinification processes and some tasting things. So this is a great first book. And then this is Karen this. McNeil's The Wine Bible. Look at that. I mean, this yeah. is like Prisoner of Azkaban stuff. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? 
This is a big boy. Yeah, this is this is a heavy one, but it's totally a, a good way to have both reference and you can read it through. So those would be my first two I would get. Cool. If I was getting more serious, this is a famous book. This is an older edition, but uh, Windows on the World, pretty famous wine course. If I was starting to get into like Psalm stuff, this is like consumer level. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. I want to have some basic knowledge yeah. slash reference material. This is, okay, I'm gonna start studying. I'd probably go here. And then I would also get a good, this is the World Atlas of Wine. And Whoa. you can see how detailed the maps get. So if you're studying and you're trying to learn the regions, this is a great book for that because it's super Real detailed. Huh? Rioja, what Look are you talking that. about Rioja? Crazy, all right, so in other words, you know, to talk about the whole scale we've been going on, the dumb, the worth of the luxury, safe to say these two are worth it. Yep. These are luxury? I, exactly, yeah. spot on. Okay. No, we didn't forget. We are putting the wine diaper to the test. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you ready? Yeah, man, I, I, I think I'm ready as I'll ever be. Let's pop that right in there. Oh, it's a snug fit. All right. All right, zip it up. All right, man. Um, I don't know what I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen here. I'm if you have screwed. to, you leave me behind. You save yourself. All right, you ready, man? Yeah. <laughs> All right, three, two. <laughs> my ear is broken. Oh my god, the wine diaper. Yeah. Three, two. Dude, don't show our girlfriends Shut this. This is terrible. Three, two. <laughs> 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 Well, the problem is, is we broke the bag, though. With the <laughs> we got to we got to test the absorption. Let's see. Yeah. What we, even though most of it's on the board by now, this looks like a crime scene. It does slightly. <laughs> In the wine diaper's defense, I don't think it expects that the wine bottle is no, going to no, be violently no, no, no. Uh, thrashed. Yeah. You know, I want to squeeze this to see how much we got out of it, but there are micro so shards much. of glass. I mean, I think I'd take it as better than nothing. I think I would still hope it didn't break in my suitcase. Yeah, dude, look at that. It's worth it. <laughs> All right, yeah, anyways, you get the idea. All right, the wine diaper. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna sue us. <laughs> All right, looks, it looks kind of dope all laid out like this. We, we went through a lot today. We did. Yeah, man. I guess the question that remains that you might be asking yourselves too as the viewer, uh, if you had to choose just, just one gizmo of all these, which would it be? Oh, there's no question. You can't get to the wine without it. <laughs> You're right. All right, man, well, this was a lot of fun. I appreciate you kind of like breaking all this down for me. Now I feel like I at least kind of know how to navigate in the store when I see all these hanging on the wall and things all over and, and all that. Did that make sense? Does that make sense? I don't know. Everything's hanging on the wall. Everything's <laughs> hanging on the wall. I'm walking in every shop you ever go in, all this is hanging on the wall, including this decanter somehow. No, but for real, man, I appreciate you coming in. This was a lot of fun. No, no, of course. I hope, uh, I hope you learned a little something. I learned a lot today. Yeah. Man. I always do and I watch your stuff. Speaking of which, you gotta go check out his channel. If you love wine slash if you just like travel, like food travel videos and stuff like that, he's got an incredible channel with these like long, beautifully produced, like episodic, educational um, uh, wine videos. Yeah, for sure. If you're yeah. into wine, if you're just yeah. getting into wine, if you're already a sommelier and you want more knowledge, it's really yeah. good for he anybody. He cooks too. He <laughs> cooks. I cook, not like this guy. <laughs> hey, uh, he's good though, he's good. No, but uh, yeah, yeah, if you have a moment, check it out. V is for Vino on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It will come right up. Uh, we've been all over the world. You can see some pretty amazing wine country and we do some education yeah. as well. So. You literally just got back from Lebanon, so crazy stuff. We're gonna leave a link for that below if you wanna check him out. That's pretty much all I got for you this time, so. So, uh, until next time. <laughs> <laughs>